Hey everybody, this is John Wood again, and I'm coming to you from beautiful Billings, Montana. And as I promised the other day when I did the uh, Graveyard BWO pattern, I am going to do the uh, Graveyard Betas. Now this is the original pattern that I started fishing down on the Bighorn River south of here at Fort Smith. And this has just been a really killer pattern down there and several other places that it's been fished. And I, ha I have a feeling that anywhere you put this in the water where there are BWOs or any kind of small betas, that this is going to catch some fish. Now, I'm not going to discuss everything that I discussed in that, um, that other video. Um, I talked about how I handled the uh, leg material, which is CCT fibers from Cascade Crest Tools. And I also uh, talked a little bit about the graveyard foam. If you want to know about the graveyard foam or the CCT fibers, check out that Graveyard BWO video and you can get a little more information there. But I wanted to just show you this because the colors are different and I found that it, um, it works in certain places a little bit better than the olive version. Like uh, down on the Shoshone River, this uh, gray-brown version works a little bit better. Um, early in the season and then later in the season the olive works a little bit better and it, it just depends on the water you're fishing and what exact species of betas you've got coming on also a uh, if you tie this in a really big version on a size 12 hook it uh, does real good in still waters for uh, a calabatus emerger I do want to cover the fact that this is a size 16 hook, but I'm tying the body so that it is a size 12. And how I accomplish that is by the fact that this um, hook, the TMCO 2457, is a 2X short shank and it also has a 2x wide gap and the reason I'm using this is because it's got a ton of hooking power and if you look at the body of that fly in comparison to a standard number 20 hook it's just a tad longer but I have used this where I'm getting uh, larva and emergers when I sign that are down to a size 22 and they still do not hesitate to hit this fly. And that goes for the, uh, the olive and this gray version. So uh, don't be afraid to use this fly even though the hook is a lot bigger and the silhouette is just a little bit bigger. Do not be afraid to use this in areas where you've got really small betas. Now I tied this particular one and the olive version, the BWO, in um, sizes on, on the size hook 18 all the way up to a 14. And this one, I, like I said earlier, I will go up to a 12 if I am looking to imitate a uh, Calabatus and Stillwater. And these are really good fished static under an indicator for that. Now as we go through, I want to talk to you a little bit about material substitutions. So first is the thread. I love this UTC 70 denier thread and this is the gray brown. And the reason I love this is because it does not have as much twist as some of the other brands like the uh, uni thread. The uni thread has a lot of twist to it. It doesn't flatten out as well and it doesn't have the same sheen. Now for the tail, I'm using a rooster hack feather. 
and it's just your standard rooster hackle feather and I want to get a pretty big one off of the back of the uh, neck and I want to talk about these fibers and how I prep this and when I first started fishing this fly I would start by using these barbs right down here and then work up along the stem of the hackle and I did find that some of these flies just they would not catch fish as well as the others and what I discovered after really looking at them is if you look at these barbs right here the tips which are going to be our tail are really fine but then you get down here further towards the tip of the hackle and there's a little bit more color and the tips of those are just a little bit more dense and that makes a difference in the silhouette of the tail on the fly and you can get that density by using more like you can use twice as many from down here on the butt but the problem is is it builds up an extreme amount of bulk through the center of the fly and I'm trying to keep this fly as slender as possible on this heavy wire hook so I'm going to move from where these barbs are really fine I'm going to move to where I can see the difference in the tips and just strip the rest of that off and you can see that first area that I stripped was where the fluff is and then you can see how far I've gone up the stem and as you get closer to the tip you're going to need fewer and fewer barbs because they just get thicker you'll need fewer of those thicker barbs to get the same density in the tail of the fly so I'm just going to pluck about 10 or 12 of these off of the stem and you can see there's a little curve in there don't worry about that when that gets wet it straightens out pretty good just grab those so that they're even and then just pull your stem away pinch those down and I'm going to try to measure from just behind the eye of the hook to the back of the bend and that's how long I want that tail transfer that to my other hand and catch it right there now this tail I want it the length of that fly now I've caught that on top of where my thread base was and then I'm just going to work it forward and you can see that uh, UTC thread hanging there it's nice and flat and it covers that real evenly without building up a lot of bulk now we're just going to trim those butts give that a couple of wraps over and forward of the butts and then cock that up at a slightly different angle we want our shank going upward now you can see the tail is in line with the general level of the hook shank there is a curve in that hook shank but it's going right straight back I want you to pay attention to that now because in a few minutes um, we're going to cock that tail downward and you'll be able to see what I'm talking about a little bit better now for the rib I am using uh, a material that I sell on my website jwoodflyfish.com click on tying materials and you'll find this it is ultra rib and this is a uh, half millimeter material comes in a variety of colors it's a semi translucent material but it's got this is the quality that I really like it's got a ton of stretch you can stretch that down to the size of a small ultra wire so you can use this on really tiny flies and not only on these betas but I like this on several of the different uh, midge patterns that I tie especially for lakes um, it's just got a, it gives a great sheen and uh, a nice coloration that you can't get with wire so I'm going to catch this in up towards the front and I want you to notice that there's a gap right here where I don't have any thread or material I'm going to pop that back over the butts of those uh, 
hackle barbs and catch that in right there. Now before you stretch this, because we're going to stretch it down the side, I want you to just put a little pressure on it. Make three or four really tight wraps and you can see it worked its way around to the back side of the hook shank and that is exactly where I want it. Because I don't want to disturb the tail whenever we wrap the rib later on. So I'm wrapping right back to where I started. You can see my thread has opened up. And I've got that, oh, I broke that off. Uh, had a little weak spot in there. You can feel when this stuff is stretched to maximum capacity. And I was just getting a little rambunctious there. So let's do the skin. I'm going to tighten that thread up a hair by spinning it clockwise. It had opened up a little more than I wanted. So, well, catch that in right over where the uh, hackle bar butts were trimmed. Let that pop to the back side of the hook and then just stretch it. You'll feel when it stops. Don't get crazy like I did just then and overstretch it. Now, here's what I want you to look at. When I get to just beyond where that I had wrapped the tail down, I'm going to make a couple of wraps. And on that second wrap, now did you see that? The hackle barbs tilted downward. That means you are at the back of the hook shank and you're starting into the bend. Stop there, make one more wrap directly over the top of that, and then work your way back towards the eye of the hook. This keeps you from making this body of the fly larger than you want it because remember we're trying to make this size 16 we want the body to be the size of a size 20 and if you keep going with that then you're going to make that fly bigger than you want it to be now here's another thing that i didn't discuss in the other video sometimes this tail wants to walk towards the back side of the hook instead of staying right on top easy way to fix that Pull your rib downward and then just cock it back over on your side of the hook and you'll see that tail reposition itself. This one did not really move so I don't have to worry about that. Now I'm just going to wrap that rib. Normally I turn that upside down to wrap it but I don't want my uh, camera to go out of focus. Now you can see the really definite segmentation and the color change in that thread that occurs as you wrap this ultra rib. Again, it's available on my website. Um, it changes the overall color of the fly. Now to lock that down because it's got so much stretch, you want to make sure it's locked very securely. Pull the rib all the way around to where you're not quite all the way on the opposite side of the hook, but you're beyond the top of the hook. Go behind and lock that down really tight without letting any pressure off of it. Go in front, behind, in front, behind, and in front. That's three times where the thread goes behind and in front of this rib. Stretch it out as far as you can and cut it right there and then just for security's sake, give it a couple wraps over that butt. Now you can see that that is completely locked down. Now, material substitution. Um, this material is something that I searched long and hard to find. This is, and I'm going to tell you what it is, if you want to buy a bulk of it, it's really the only way to get it, a particular electronics packing foam. Now, if you want to try to substitute regular fly tying foam, a half millimeter, you will not get the same effect. Because of the bubbles that are in this material, these bubbles catch light under the water and they create a glowing effect. I've tried tying these with Antron, um, regular foam, and this is the case also with my Graveyard Midge. Substituting materials and they just don't have the same look. Now this is not expensive at this time. It's uh, March 2022. I'm selling this two sheets enough to tie 1,200 
flies at least for two dollars and seventy five cents and if you buy even just buy the foam alone that uh, includes shipping if you buy other materials then there's going to be a shipping charge um, added on to that but this foam is the best foam to use for these flies it just has the best look in the water so I'm going to bring my uh, thread right up behind the eye of the hook. I've already cut this foam into a strip. And if you want to see how I did that, check out the preparing graveyard foam video here on my YouTube channel. So I'm going to catch that right there. You can see I'm about half a hook eye length back behind the eye of the hook. And then I'm going to work down to what really is going to appear to be almost half of the length of the fly between a third and a half and the reason i'm going so far back is because we're going to build a big head which you saw on that uh, fly when we got started so i wrap that back to the back of the thorax bring it forward a little bit and then the other material substitute all the materials I've used trying to find the best legs for this, I've used floral fiber, I've used Antron, I've used uh, poly, I've used even um, EP fibers, but none do exactly what I want it to do the way these CCT fibers do. Again, if you want to see how I handle those, look at that uh, graveyard, graveyard BWO video. Basically, I just clip one small bundle of fibers off of a hank of CCT fibers, split it in half with a bodkin after grooming it with a small brush to get the binding wrap off, and then uh, tie a knot in the end of it, even up the ends, and you're ready to use it. So I'm just going to pull that up there, even that up one more time. I want my thread right behind the eye of the hook. Put it beyond the eye of the hook enough that you can catch it securely and then drag it back to where the tips are about at the front end of the eye of the hook. And then make three wraps without cinching them down back to the back of the thorax and then Release the pressure off your bobbin, it loosens the thread, and slide that back. Now that's something that's a little, a little bit tricky until you get the feel of it, but once you get the feel of it, uh, you won't have any trouble. But don't, don't get aggravated in the beginning if you pull that out a couple of times. Just take a deep breath, start that little process over, and everything will be hunky-dunky. Now for the thorax, I'm using the same ice dubbing it's a uv dark olive and little thing about this ice dubbing here in uh, 2021 i noticed that the fibers of this ice dubbing have gotten much more coarse through uh, 2021 and i could not even begin to tell you why um, so i'm not even going to speculate on that but it's a little more tricky to use than the finer fibers and then some of the colors are still really fine um, but this dark olive uv has gotten pretty coarse so you just have to take your time and work it onto the thread using a little moisture now i don't like using dubbing wax on anything that has flash in my dubbing because uh, you're kind of covering up the property that you're using it for so don't don't fall back on wax to get this thing this dubbing on there just take your time work it around there and you'll find once you start wrapping you can actually pull on it a little bit and wrap it and get it to go a little bit tighter and it's still back there where I started it's rough and that's okay I'm just going to keep 
wrapping it, wrapping it, wrapping it. This is a little slower than it used to be with the finer dubbing, but it is what it is. I used to hate that statement, but now I'm using it. You can see when I got to the end of the dubbing, I made a couple of wraps right there where I ended and then make a couple of wraps through the dubbing as you work your way to the eye of the hook. And I've got some a lot of scragglers on here because I'm using a different process. I normally turn the jaws upside down using the rotation feature or the rotary feature on my Renzetti Master Vice, but for the sake of this video, I'm doing it without doing the rotation. Okay, so that's what you want right there. That's what you want to end with with your dubbing. And there may be a piece over there I can't see, but we'll check that here in a minute. So, to use your, to create your legs, we're going to pull that CCT fiber over, drop the thread over once, and this I am going to spin it, and I hope it stays in focus enough that you can see what's happening. And I've just got the one wrap right behind the eye of the hook, and then just put your finger on the eye of the hook and pull those fibers back, and you can position that the CCT fibers back and forth on the eye of the hook until they split. And then wrap it back to the thorax. And if you need to, take your thumbnail and push those legs that are on the back side of the hook at this point into position. And then make one more spiral wrap to right behind the eye. And I'm going to bring my vise around this way so I don't undo that wrap. And now, my legs are exactly where I want them to be. Now I'm just going to pull the foam over. Catch it right behind the eye of the hook. Make one wide wrap to the front of the thorax. Fold the foam back. Catch that with a couple of wraps. And then wrap that foam to compress the bubble it created. And I want to end up right in front of the thorax. And you can see that's a pretty thick head on that fly. And that's what we're looking for. I'm going to take my little whip finisher here. And I'm starting at the thorax. Make four wraps going slightly forward. And then four wraps going back. And end your whip finish. And that whip finish is super secure. Um, I, knock on wood, will tell you that I've never had one of these come unraveled. Now I'm just going to take that foam, trim it right at the back of the thorax. You can see it pops up a little bit. And if you feel like your legs aren't to the side enough, you can just pull them up until they are right on the side of the hook. And then without putting too much pressure, because you don't want to pull them back down to the bottom of the hook. Cut your legs about halfway between the thorax and the gap. And that, my friends, is, let me trim that right there, just a bit. And that is the Graveyard Betis. And if you're wondering about the Graveyard PMD, I'm going to do a short little video on that. There will be far less talking just to make sure that you uh, get what I'm doing with it. I'm just going to use, uh, show you the materials that I'm using and run through it on a uh, size 14 hook. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Tie some of these things up. If you need some of the materials, be able, be sure and uh, check out my website, jwoodflyfish.com. Click on the fly tying materials tab at the top of the page, and you will find the graveyard foam and ultra rib right there. They're very inexpensive, yet very effective materials. Until next time, peace, love, and fly fishing, my friend.